This is part 48 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to configure and use SQL Server with Entity Framework Core. One of the important things that we need to configure while using Entity Framework Core is the database provider that we plan to use. Entity Framework Core supports a wide variety of databases, including non-relational databases. This MSDN page right here has a complete list of database providers. These database providers are distributed as NuGet packages. I'll have the link to this page available both in the description of this video as well as on my blog. We want to configure and use Microsoft SQL Server with Entity Framework Core. We do this configuration with an configure services method of the startup class and as you already know the startup class is present in this file startup.cs if you recollect in our previous video in the series we created this app db context class this is our application specific db context class we want to register this class with the asp.net core dependency injection system we do that within configure services method so inside this method on the i service collection interface Notice we have got two methods, addDBContext and addDBContextPool. We can use either of these methods to register our application specific dbContext class. I'm going to use addDBContextPool. We'll discuss the difference between these two methods in just a bit. And this method has got a generic parameter. We are going to specify our application specific dbContext class, addDBContext, as the value for the generic parameter. The difference is, as the name implies, add DB context pool method provides DB context pooling. So this means every time an instance of this app DB context class is requested, instead of creating a brand new instance, ASP.NET Core checks if there is an instance available in the DB context pool. If there is an instance available, then that instance is returned instead of creating a brand new instance of this class. From a concept standpoint, DB context pooling is very similar to how database connection pooling works in ADO.NET. From a performance standpoint, add DB context pool method is better over add DB context method. Add DB context pool method is introduced in ASP.NET Core 2.0. So if you're using ASP.NET Core 2.0 or later in your project, then use add DB context pool method over add DB context method. So at this point, we have our application specific DB context class, app DB context, registered with the ASP.NET Core dependency injection system. Next, we also need to specify the database provider that we want to use in our application. In our case, we want to use Microsoft SQL Server. For that, notice on this options parameter, we have use SQL Server method but that method does not show up in the IntelliSense because we haven't imported the required namespace yet. This method is present in Microsoft.EntityFrameworkCore namespace. Let's bring it in by pressing Control period and then the Enter key. Notice we still have a red squiggly under Use SQL Server extension method. When I hover the mouse over, the error message says no overload for method use SQL Server takes zero arguments. And from the IntelliSense, notice this method expects a connection string. Obviously, to connect to a database, we need the connection string of that database. Instead of hard coding the connection string inside this method right here, let's store it in our app settings.json file. Let me include a section for connection strings. give our connection string a name. I'm going to call it employee DB connection. Next, we need to specify the connection string itself. First, the server. So server equals within parenthesis local DB, two backward slashes, and then MS SQL local DB. We are using SQL Server Local DB, which is automatically installed with Visual Studio. If you want to use full-blown SQL Server instead, all you need to do is change the connection string here to point to your instance of SQL Server. After the server is specified, we also need to specify the database. For that, we use the database keyword and then the name of our database. I'm going to call our database EmployeeDB. 
We don't have this database. It will be created using EF core code first approach. We'll look at this in action in our upcoming videos. Finally, we also need to specify how we want to connect to SQL Server. We are going to use integrated Windows authentication. To specify, we want to use integrated Windows authentication. We set trusted underscore connection equals true. In classic ASP.NET, we store configuration information in web.config file, which is in XML format. In ASP.NET Core, there are different configuration sources. One such configuration source is this app settings.json file, and as you can see, this file is in JSON format. Now we want to read the value of this connection string within configure services. For that, we're going to use this i configuration service provided by ASP.NET Core. So on this private instance underscore config, notice we have get connection string method, and to this method we need to specify the name of the connection string. We named our connection employee DB connection. So let's specify this name within this method right here. Now let's quickly recap what we have discussed so far. There are several things that are happening as a result of this one line of code. First, we registered our application specific DB context class, this app DB context with the ASP.NET Core dependency injection system using add DB context pool method. This method provides DB context pooling, which is obviously better from a performance standpoint. And then we also specified we want to use SQL Server as the database provider for our application using this use SQL Server extension method. We stored the connection string with an app settings.json file and to read that connection string value, we're using this I configuration service provided by ASP.NET Core. If we take a look at the connection string in app settings.json file, notice we specify three things server, database, and how we want to connect to the server. To specify that we want to connect to SQL Server using integrated Windows authentication, we can either set trusted underscore connection equals true, integrated security equals SSPI, or integrated security equals true. All these three settings specify the same thing, that is, we want to use integrated Windows authentication instead of SQL Server authentication to connect to SQL Server. At the moment, our application is still using this mock employee repository class, which has an in-memory hard-coded list of employees. In our next video, we'll implement SQL repository, which stores and retrieves employee data from the local SQL Server DB that we have just configured. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.